So, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we've had some some incredibly informative talks this morning, <coughs> and in 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 some regards, they've perhaps preempted some of the stuff we will speak about now. But they also complement the the workshop we're going to have today and. The, the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination tool has become an, a linchpin within the Paracon network. It has become a tool that forms the foundation of all of our meetings along with the rabies epidemiological bulletin. And I would like to use this opportunity to introduce you to the tool and the principles of the tool and then use the workshop this afternoon to actually give you an opportunity to use the tool and actually apply it for your own country. So um, this is the, the latest map of um, showing uh, rabies endemicity across um, the globe. Uh, it was released by the WHO based on 2016 data. But um, countries in blue are endemic for canine mediated human rabies. So this is the typical example that we see where the burden is highest in Africa and Asia, but there's very, very few countries in the Eastern Hemisphere that have actually controlled and eliminated canine-mediated rabies. But if we look at, at some of the examples of the Americas and Europe, it's, it's evident that canine-mediated rabies can be controlled and can be eliminated. It is possible to do it. And... We know the principle is very easy. We need to get enough vaccine with, into the dog population. And um, that's, that's all we need to do. Vaccinate enough dogs. But that whole process is extremely intricate. It's not a matter of just vaccinating a few dogs. It is about understanding the dog ecology and understanding the intricacies with regards to getting that vaccination coverage high enough. And it's seen in many campaigns across the world that's been going on for years, including campaigns reported on within the Mirab network that have been vaccinating dogs for many years, yet they have not achieved that success yet. They are either very close or they've reached the point where they struggle to continue. And if we look at the global framework for rabies elimination, we see the different pillars that are required to have effective canine rabies control. And this list in its own is an extremely intricate list. It's very, very comprehensive. But that is the intricacies involved with canine rabies control. It is not a simple process. It requires the one health approach and it requires focus in various components. But to provide somebody with this list and expect it to be usable is quite often a difficult task, which is where the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination comes in. And the easiest way to explain to you what this tool is, it is a roadmap. It provides you with everything you need to know if you want to start a rabies control program or if you have something already in place and you want to measure how far your efforts have reached and what do you need to do next. <laughs> and um, this tool itself is essentially an Excel sheet. If you look at it, you'll realize it's much more complicated, but it's based on Excel and it is a self-assessment and practical guide that can help you develop a national program or to refine an existing program. It doesn't have to replace it. And this tool consists of a bunch of activities, simple yes, no questions that provide measurable progress in a chronological order. And for every one of these activities, we've provided <laughs> practical guidance and examples of how you can achieve them. So we provide you with what needs to be done. We provide you with the avenue in which to do it. And we've broken those steps down into <laughs> smaller steps that build from a local level to something more global. And the SAID tool itself consists of various broad components and these components um, all fall in line with that stop R framework with the global framework developed by the tripartite and GOC and the reason why these components are included is because all of them are important in a rabies control program 
you do need prevention and control you do need the information and education and communication that Deepa spoke about this morning you do need dog population management and your surveillance so all of these components form the foundation for a good rabies control program now the CE tool consists of stages from stage zero all the way to stage five and briefly at the end of the day we would like to know where along this say ladder each of the Mirab countries fall so stage zero which is we we will find that almost certainly none of our countries are purely for the sake that we have a good indication of the burden within the countries but stage zero is a country with no information of rabies in their country they know it's there but there's absolutely no information on it they're not doing any any work in terms of rabies control or understanding the epidemiology stage one is a country that has local level assessments and campaigns in place and this results in a short-term rabies action plan stage two is a country that has developed an, an endorsed national rabies control strategy a big document that shows based on the local level successes how rabies is going to be controlled and eliminated Stage three is a country that has full-scale implementation of this strategy and success is observed. One starts seeing the decline in canine rabies cases and one sees the decline in human rabies cases. Stage four is the 2030 goal. This is the zero by 30 where there are no more canine mediated human rabies deaths. And the elimination of dog rabies is following thereon. And stage five is the end goal for all of us. Freedom from human and dog rabies. So countries will typically fall within this say, ladder between stage zero and stage five. And as I mentioned, I hope by the end of today's workshop, we can have this say, score for each of the countries and also explain the additional outputs and their uses to the countries. And we are going to have a session um, hopefully before coffee but if we run out of time a few minutes after the tea break um, quickly showing you how the say tool works but we also have walkthrough videos and these videos are on your usb drives as well so the say tool as i mentioned is an excel based tool works on microsoft excel and it consists of two components the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination, as well as a practical work plan development tool that I'll mention. So the first point is the SAE tool itself. So these are the two halves of the same coin. And the SAE tool provides that overview and evaluation of the current rabies situation. And I'm going to take a few minutes and quickly see if I can get this video to play. There we go. So this video is on your USB as well. And this provides an overview of how the SEI and work plan tool are used. So as I mentioned, the SEI tool consists of different components. It has an introduction page that provides you with all of the information discussed today on how the, how the, the SEI tool works. There is a direct link to the Stop R framework if the user wishes to, to actually gain access to that content. And this is just an introduction page that provides guidelines and background information on what the tool does. <clears throat> the first page is about the country information. Who completed this assessment? Where was it done? And on what date? It is not about accountability, but as we all know, turnover in our profession is quite high. And it is good to know who were the people who answered these, these assessments. The tool itself works through a progressive path. So one has simple arrows that move between every component. And this is an example of the first component, data collection and analysis. The first column indicates the say stage um, of which the activity belongs to. Second column is any subcomponents. The third column is the actual activity, the yes, no questions that need to be answered. The next column provides additional information that helps the user. The next column provides 
yes or no answers that we will discuss within our workshop itself. You can leave any specific remarks or comments. And for every single activity, there is a direct link to the right relevant section within the rabies blueprint or to the OIE or WHO guidelines pertaining to that activity. The bottom of every page is a definition bar for any difficult concepts. But the principle of this SEI tool is comprehensive, not complicated. An activity, as I mentioned, is a simple yes, no question. If the answer is yes, the answer is changed from zero to one. That is all you have to do. So we've sped this video up and you'll see it progresses through the process. And that is what we expect you to do, <laughs> to read these activities as experts within your own country, as experts that understand the current situation, to work through these, these activities and to the best of your abilities, answer them as either one or zero. And you'll see these activities with the arrow you progress through. So prevention and control, questions on laboratory diagnosis, dog population management, information education, cross-cutting issues, and legislation. Once all of these activities have been answered, um, it's time to actually look at the output, what this say tool has calculated. So this tool automatically calculates your unique say score. So you've answered the questions and the tool provides the output for you. The top of the page, you'll automatically find your unique say score. And these say scores can in go, move up in increments of 0.5. So it's not necessarily one or two, it can be a one and a half or a two and a half. You get a breakdown by component that we'll discuss in a little bit more detail now. And you can have a breakdown in every say stage as well. And we'll go into more detail with regards to, to these steps in a second. You have a visual that visually shows you your progress within every stage. And then one of the most important outputs, in my opinion, is the ability to get a broad overview of all of the accomplished work within your country or your project site. You can immediately see on a visual basis where a lot of work has been done, where has success has been achieved, and also identify the activities that are still pending. So as I mentioned, all the completed activities have turned to green. So immediately, especially one, if one has a funding body to report to, there is an overview of what has been done. And there's also a list of what is pending. And it's these pending activities, these activities that haven't been accomplished yet. So the system can list that for you that ideally need to be addressed in order to progress a national rabies control program. And it's not necessarily things we always think about, but the system provides that list of pending activities. And to take those pending activities and create a work plan is something that we'll discuss um, in, in the coming talk. So I'm going to quickly go through it again. Once we've answered all these questions, and it's important to remember these questions pertain to canine mediated rabies. We understand there is this risk of the wildlife human interface, but we also know that canine rabies accounts for human rabies in upwards of 90% of the cases. So our main priority should be the control and elimination of canine mediated rabies, which is what this tool addresses. So we get a say score, which can be used to measure progress over time. We don't expect countries to, to do these assessments once off. It is a test, it's an assessment that is repeated over multiple instances. Every component is broken down into accomplished and pending activities, enabling you to see within the national framework where the strengths lie 
and where the weaknesses can be found by components. So countries might find they have a really strong surveillance network while dog population management has, has, has not been addressed adequately. So this is just an example of um, African countries that have done the say over multiple instances, and they could physically show these scores as could use these scores to demonstrate how their programs were actually in evolving and improving, how they were making progress within their countries. And these are examples that we would like to emulate across all of the networks. As I mentioned, we get the big overview of accomplished and pending activities. And it's these pending activities that feed into the work plan. And I'm going to, the work plan component is fairly brief, so I'm going to quickly do that as well. Ideally, after completing our SER assessments, we want to look at the accomplished activities and acknowledge those successes, but also ask ourselves, how can we take those activities that are still pending and address them? How can we do the things that the system has shown us is lacking? And the ideal way to do that is with a work plan or an action plan that provides GAN charts, costing, KPIs. It provides a comprehensive action plan that takes the SER assessment and takes those pending activities and provides a document that can be used. And ideally, after completing these SER assessments, you want to acknowledge your achievements. This is advocacy. Advocacy in terms of all the work that has been done. And then we want to take a pending activities and decide how will we complete them? Who will complete them and when will this be done? And I'm sure you have all been in a situation where you have a workshop where you draft an action plan. And this could be a workshop that could take a week, could take two weeks, and it takes a lot of effort to actually write the contents out. So what we have done is we have developed an action plan for every single activity in the SER assessment. So every activity has got a list of objectives, key KPIs, a time frame indication. And once you have done your SER assessment, this work plan adapts to only show you the work plan for your pending activities. So the system looks at your SER assessment, identifies what is missing in your country, and provides a work plan that is unique to your situation. And the, uh, one of the most practical things is you can customize this work plan. The contents in this action plan or work plan is not set in stone. We provide all the contents and you can customize and alter it in whatever way you see fit. But it allows countries to produce an action plan within a couple of days as opposed to within weeks of work. The content is there and is simply refined. And along with tools like the GD Rep that Terence will discuss in the, um, in the following talk, you produce a work plan that has got GAN charts, has got a costing element, and has got clear KPIs that you can measure your success with. And as I mentioned, because you can customize it, these are KPIs defined by you. It is not a prescriptive tool, can be tailored to your exact needs. And that is done through the practical work plan. For the sake of time, as well as within today's workshop, I'm not going to go through the video. The video on how to use this tool is also on your USB. It's a walkthrough video screen recording that shows exactly how it works. But briefly, for every SER activity that is pending, the system automatically generates objectives, step-by-step -step process that could be followed to achieve these activities. It provides an outcome, a, a suggested list of the responsible authorities, a suggested time frame, and a clear list of deliverables or KPIs. And as I mentioned, it can all be customized. It's not set in stone. And as you progress and you work through this tool, you can produce a final work plan. And this document, although it's done in Excel, and you have this tool on your USB, although all of this is being done in Excel, 
there is a single button that you can click and it saves your entire work plan as a PDF. It converts that Excel sheet into a PDF that can be shared. It can be distributed and can be used to secure funding and, and, and report on, on project work done to date. Uh, before I conclude my talk, I would just like to, to um, at least extend some acknowledgement. The SEI tool, as I mentioned, is not static. It has undergone various rounds of revision in terms of improving the use of the tool, the, the wording within the tool, the user friendliness of the tool. And this has been done in collaboration with the tripartite CDC World Animal Protection and various other international organizations that have provided their input and professional experience and opinion on the wording and the tool itself. And um, based on that, we obviously welcome any feedback that you might have after we, we go through the SEI tool in um, the, say, the workshop after the coffee break. Um, I'm going to invite Terence to just quickly talk about the GD rep, and if we have some time before the coffee break, we can um, start going through the tool or perhaps answer a few questions in the meantime. But thank you very much for your time.